Hello, and welcome to our lecture, series of lectures, uh, evaluating the ramp walls as compression struts. So first, I'll frame the problem. Most of our analyses assume that the entire abutment acts as a single block sliding uphill or downhill, depending on the site. This allows us to use sidewall friction and include the tier tower weight in our sliding resistance checks, significantly increasing the capacity of our bridge abutments. However, there is a missing link. In order to make this assumption, we are assuming that the ramp walls act as compression struts, supported by the interior fill on one side for the full height of the wall and by native soil on the other, only for the embedded portion of the ramp wall. The walls transfer a portion of this force into the foundation. That force is slowly dissipating with friction as it gets transferred to the foundation. So we'll check them in compression uh, as columns. We'll check them as shear walls and in flexure when the anchor is vertically offset from the foundation, causing an eccentric loading when treated as a masonry column. Conservatively, we can assume a percentage of the horizontal forces by area and stiffness is transferred to the wall as a shear force. In reality, as we move further from the anchor, more force is dissipated into the ground as friction, or with friction, rather. And you can see that all in this diagram here. <clears throat> now, getting into solving the problem, we're going to consult uh, ACI 530-11 or 2011 version of the ACI 530 building code, which is the building code requirements and specifications for masonry structures. This code, reading through, uh, prompts us to check three things. We'll check first bearing pressure, lateral capacity as a shear wall, and then combined compressive and flexural strength, checking this uh, ramp wall as a column, which is slightly uncommon for a masonry shear wall, but we want to check it as a column because this wall is essentially getting squished between the cables pulling on the anchor and the friction force and the inertia of the foundation and uh, tier and tower structure. So we'll add that check in as well. And also note, a final note uh, for this introduction lecture that this code is only considering brick and concrete masonry units. Uh, we'll view the river rock stone masonry walls that we are standard or use for use on site as unreinforced masonry walls for now. And then after checking with ACI to derive our equations, uh, we'll, we'll dive into some research pa papers and we'll adjust for that river rock masonry by adjusting the FM or the compressive strength of the masonry value that's actually used within those codes. In the next lecture, we'll start talking about bearing pressure.